I'm going to show you how to work short row shaping using the Japanese method. I think this one is the easiest to work and I also like the results that it gives the best. The only thing that you'll need for this method is either two coilless safety pins or two locking stitch markers. So we're on the right side of the work, the knit side, so you work to where you want the first short row to end, which we'll make here. You turn to the wrong side, slip the first stitch to the right hand needle purlwise, place a stitch marker on the working yarn, and then holding it to the back of the work, you just purl to where you want the, the other end of the short row to be. And you see how the stitch marker is clipped around the strand of yarn and it goes between the stitch that you slipped and the stitch next to it. So this is where we'll have the next end of the short row be. And you slip, uh, you turn your work to the right side, slip the first stitch, again purlwise, place the marker on the working yarn, and holding it to the, close to the work, you then continue to knit. Now you notice that where we just turned and slipped, you've got a pretty decent sized gap, so that's pretty obvious, so you can't miss it when you're working with it. And then at the other end where we did the first short row, again, you have another pretty good size gap that's unmistakable. So once you first work the first two short rows, then you work to the gap. And you can see we're at the gap now. It, as you get closer to it, it becomes even more obvious. So you work that last stitch. And then if you look at the back of your work, you'll notice that that stitch marker is clipped to a loop of yarn that's at the back of the work, and it's also below the stitch that you just finished on the right-hand needle. So you pick up the stitch marker, and then you're going to place, your, uh, place that loop on the left-hand needle. You want to make sure that you're not twisted. See, that's what the twisted stitch looks like. You want the stitch to be untwisted and open. And so you're going to insert the left-hand needle into that loop and remove the marker. And then to close the gap, here's the gap again with the loop that we just placed on the left-hand needle. So now to close the gap, you'll knit the stitch, the next stitch on the left-hand needle together with the loop. And there you've closed the gap. So now you want to knit one more stitch. Sometimes your pattern will have you knit multiple stitches before you work the next short row. So now we'll turn to the wrong side, slip that first stitch again, place the marker on the working yarn, and hold that marker snug to the back of the work, and then just purl to the next gap. And there again you can see how big that gap is and how easy, how hard it would be to miss it. So you purl the last stitch before the gap, and now that we're on the wrong side, you can see that the stitch marker is on the wrong side of the work. And again, it's clipped nicely on that little loop. So to close the gap here on the wrong side, you want to slip the first stitch on the, right, on the left hand needle, and then you pick up that loop. Again, you don't want to twist the loop. That's what it looks like twisted. You want to make sure that it's nice and open and insert the left hand needle into it. Then remove the marker. And then you're going to slip that stitch that you first slipped to the right hand back to the left hand needle. So you've got the slip stitch and that loop. And then you purl those two stitches together to close the gap. And then I'm just going to purl another stitch and turn to short row again. So you've now worked the first two short rows and you're ready to work two more. So you slip this, the first stitch, 
place that marker on the working yarn and then knit to the gap at the other end. And now we've reached the gap and you want to pull up that loop on the back Insert your left hand needle into it, remove the marker, and knit two stitches together. And I'm going to knit one more stitch, turn to the wrong side, slip the first stitch, place the marker on the working yarn, and then purl across to the next gap. the gap and so for, for to close the gap first you'll slip the stitch to the right hand needle and pull up that loop and insert the left hand needle remove the marker slip the slip stitch back to the left hand needle so that you can then purl those two stitches together and then purl one extra stitch and we're back on the right side row and you can see that it's created a little bit of extra fabric. 